Hola muchachos, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. Aquí tienen el horario para hoy, martes, el primer de febrero. We're now in the month of February. Your homework for today was exercise 8, página 108. This was the drawing that we did last week. And for that drawing, you described the clothing, the colors, the style, the size, and the material of the items of clothing in your drawing. Clothing, which can be found on page 70. Take a look at the video from the previous uh, class to get a more detailed description on this assignment. But clothing can be found on page 70. You're going to list two or three items of clothing in your picture, like pantalones or jeans, camiseta, gorra, zapatos, colors, naranja, rojo, verde, azul, estilo, that's going to be on page 124, and forgive me, colors are on page 98. Colors, página 98. Estilo, página 124. For the style, I'd probably call that flojo. Flojo, meaning baggy or loose fitting. La talla, el número, is the size. And again, you can find that on page 124. Maybe grande or extra grande. De que esta hecho? What's it made of? That's also on page 124. Uh, algodón, tela sintética, cuero, lana, etc. And then you drew the picture, whichever picture or image you wanted to use. So that was your homework due for today. Learning target is to express completed actions in the simple past tense. Your warm-up is a bit different in that you're actually going to turn in your warm-up uh, as an assignment here. And it's actually a practice quiz. So if you click on this link, it'll download the Word document. And we're going to do this warm-up together in class. If you're not here, you're just going to have to make it up when you come back. Uh, there's no way to go about it otherwise. So, yeah, I'll explain the warm-up. Basically, it's listening comprehension for the numbers. And then you're going to write the number that you see there in numerical form, and then in Spanish down below. But we'll do that together in class, and then you'll submit that via Canvas. New notes here on the preterite tense. That's our main focus for today. So that'll take you to this PowerPoint here. You also have notes to fill out. And we're going to fill in these top two boxes, the AR and ER IR endings with the ER, or excuse me, the AR and ER IR endings that are on page 110. So here are your AR endings of the preterite. And again, the preterite is used to describe past actions, simple past tense. So instead of o, as, a, amos, an, uh, which were the present tense endings we looked at at the beginning of the year, these endings are what we use to describe past actions. Your AR endings are E, ASTE, O, AMOS, ARON. And that's what you're going to fill in the blanks with. E, ASTE, O, AMOS, ARON. E, aste, o, amos, aro. And then your ER and IR endings are right here. ER verbs like the verb aprender and IR verbs like the verb escribir actually share the same endings in the simple past. And those endings are E in the O form, iste, io, imos, ieron. And you're going to put those over here. E, iste, yo, imos, yeron. 
remember that you want to include accents in the yo form and the ele a usted form. And we'll talk about why that's important together in class. Changes the pronunciation for sure, changes the form, form meaning yo, to, or el ella, and it also changes the tense, past or present. That's why those accents are so important. Uh, the only other thing I want you to add for your notes, a lot of the stuff that's in here are for irregular verbs in the past. We're not going to quite touch that this chapter yet. Um, we'll go over that more uh, in Chapter 3A, next chapter. So we're going to skip all of this stuff in the middle and go all the way to the bottom. Cargars are verbs, are AR verbs that have a spelling change only in the yo form. Spelling changes. For car verbs, you're going to change the C to a QU, like in the verb bus buscar. In the yo form, it would be busque. Buscar is to look for. So to say, I looked in Spanish, yo busque. In the other forms, it's there's no spelling change. Buscaste, busco, buscamos, but in the O form, that C changes to a Q U. Only in the O form. Pagar is an example of a gar verb. In gar verbs, the G changes to a G U. Or excuse me, a G U. Again, only in the O form. Yo pague. Almorzar is the verb to have lunch. It's a czar verb. And the way that that uh, verb changes is the Z changes to a C. Almorce. Still ending in E with an accent. It's just these spelling changes that make it irregular. Uh, we'll watch a video, the Grammatica Video. And then we're going to do guided practice exercise 13. Filling in the blank with the appropriate form of the verb in the preterite, the verb that appears in parentheses. So conjugating each of these according to the subject. Uh, number five doesn't have a subject, as you can see. Um, so whenever it doesn't, whenever you come across a sentence that doesn't have a subject, you're going to refer to the subject from the previous sentence. Whenever you have, whenever a subject is absent in any of these exercises, you're going to you're going to utilize the same subject from the previous question. Uh, number nine is tricky because the verb gustar doesn't conjugate according to the speaker. I mean, think about it. How do you say I like in Spanish? I like would be me gusta, me gusta. Not ending in O, right? Even though you're talking about yourself. Gustar only has, uh, excuse me, two, po two forms. The third person singular because it's an AR verb, it would be gusto, or the third person plural, gustaron. And that just depends upon whether the thing that's being liked is singular or plural. In this case, plural, because you're talking about um, her grandmother liking the earrings a lot. So gustar, a little tricky. And then also number 10, llegar, is one of those cargarzar verbs, right? So if it's in the yo form, you want to make sure that you're doing that spelling change uh, as outlined up above in your notes. So that is where we will leave off with exercise 13. If you guys don't have any homework at all due for today, uh, with the exception, or due for next class rather, uh, you do have your exercise 8, page 108, to turn in by the end of today if you've not done that. You do have a quiz coming up, and that's what this warm-up was all about, the quiz will be next class and it will be on the numbers one, excuse me, zero to a thousand. And you will be able to use page 99 on that quiz. So you have that to lean on. Um, and it will look very similar to the quiz or the practice quiz that you did today. So study page 99, get comfortable with uh, the pronunciation of each of those numbers, go into Canvas and take a look at the page for the numbers 0 through 1,000, take a look at the video content there, and come ready for your quiz next class. Nos vemos, muchachos. Adios.